So this is a bit of an impromptu video. I haven't really done much planning behind it, but I would like to do a little bit of a, well, a bit of a quick survey today. I've been thinking a fair bit about social media and it's kind of been started by this idea that YouTube might be messing around with the subscription feed. And, um, and then it kind of went on to sort of other social networks that I'm involved in. And um, I think recently, maybe a couple of months ago or sort of towards the beginning of the year now, I opened up my Twitter account and started auto posting my videos um, to it, but I don't really use Twitter very much. And a few of you guys did ask me to um, to have a Twitter account so that uh, you'd know when I'd be live streaming in particular, because those things are a little bit time sensitive. But uh, I have been, when it comes to social media, spending most of my time over on LinuxRocks.online, which is a, a Mastodon instance in the Fediverse. And I think a lot of you guys actually uh, I hang out with over there, because as you can see from this little screenshot, I've got 949 followers, and the account's like a year old, which is actually you know pretty good going. And not only that, but when I do post stuff, it gets a lot of engagements, it starts a lot of the conversation. And there was like a really long thread of a really interesting conversation about the idea of federated um, social networks and federated platforms in general for things like video content and, and uh, pictures and photographs and all that kind of stuff. And we had a great time just sharing ideas and many of our ideas were different and many of our, us had different priorities. And it was a really constructive conversation, something that you just really don't get on Twitter. So as a juxtaposition between like Mastodon and Twitter, and I know Mastodon definitely has its problems, but I think if you select a good local instance with people who you share basic sort of um, uh, things in common with really, like for example on Linux Rocks, we all just share a, a love of Linux, which seems to work out really well. And I don't think there's really been any sort of uh, social issues uh, with that, that instance. It's incredibly well moderated by Omnipotence, Omnipotence, shout out there, but um, yeah, and, and the people who hang out there. And it's not just, of course, Linux Rocks, but it's also the instances that we're federated with. And I think Fosterdon, there's a lot of people who I chat with from Fosterdon. And of course, there are the more flagship instances like Mastodon Social. Um, but you just don't get that on Twitter, and, and and I've never liked Twitter. And I talked about this a little bit on my last video with um, when we played Roller Coaster Tycoon, had a bit of a chat, and uh, it it is very apparent that like the only reason people really use Twitter is this this feeling that people have that they're missing out, that they think they feel they need it for their job. No one ever wants Twitter. No one ever wants Facebook. They feel they need it. And and as someone who's deleted Facebook now, I think a couple of a couple of years ago, and I actually deleted it. The thing that drove me to delete it was that it was actually a security hazard in my life, having too much information readily uh, available, even within people within my circle of friends, just became an incredible issue. And there were, I think there were about like three different occasions where I got dangerously close to having my bank account emptied, simply because there was just enough information there that people could, um, could, could commit a, a, you know, identity fraud or very convincing phishing scams and things like that. And I mean, you know, it happens. And, and I get countless emails a day from people who have clearly had their, their email spoofed or hacked or, or been the victim of a phishing uh, campaign themselves. So um, anyway, I'm, I'm sort of getting off track here. But when it comes to, to Facebook, I deleted my Facebook account now a couple of years ago, and I haven't looked back. This idea that people feel that they need something, I think is, is largely a myth, because if you're someone worth talking to, people will find other ways to talk to you. And I know that um, some of you actually even said that even though people typically hate Twitter and, and stuff like that, uh, email is something that a lot of maybe younger people uh, particularly don't like uh, because they like something that's a bit more instant uh, and something that they can check on their phones. Of course, you can kind of do that with email. And there, are, in fact, uh, there is, I believe, an application in the F-Droid app store that makes your email a little bit more like an instant messaging platform. But... Um, but I actually find the email, because it's something that everyone has, and because people typically only send emails when they've got something to say, um, that that's how I get the majority of my work done, and I get it done really quite well. And with a company like Postio, and I'm, they're not a sponsor. In fact, I don't even think they do sponsorship programs. I think I might even have asked them. It might be one of the very few companies that I've actually gone out of my way and say, look, if you're going to sponsor anyone, I'm, I'm here. I really like you guys. Because uh, I, I get about two sponsorship offers a week, and... I've declined every single one of them for the past three years that I've been getting them because they're all, well, most of them are just trying to sell repackaged open source software as proprietary, which is just criminal, in my opinion, criminal. And I'd never run that as a scam pass to you guys, ever. You have my word on that. I would never, oh, horror, horrendous some of the scams that I, I, I get on that one. 
because uh, it is it's a scam if you just take like open source software and you just repackage it as proprietary and then try and sell it for a quick buck that is that is uh, that's something that yeah I, I i i i don't even reply to those emails sometimes if there are like um sometimes where people try to do interesting stuff for, uh, anyway again <laughs> getting off track because most of the people that want advertising deals don't even basically know what linux is in a lot of cases they're marketing campaigns or marketing companies from from other companies from other continents away really um and i think i'm starting to come around to the, the same idea with twitter is that twitter is seen as this like place that you kind of have to be to stay relevant and 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 this is gonna this is gonna offend a few people now but i know is that like you know when there was this thing where it's like, oh, your mum's on Facebook now, oh, your dad's on Facebook now, oh, your aunt's on Facebook now, and it's like, it's not cool anymore. I kind of feel like Twitter's well down this road as well, where it's like it's been taken over by the people that don't appreciate the platform but really just want to have a uh, a place to, to, to shout, a place to, to get attention. And I... Uh, I really don't care for that, and I'm sure a lot of you guys don't, because I don't. I get sort of like, if we go to my Twitter page now, um, it's basically, and as you can see from my feed here, is but I basically use it to get local news and stuff like that. Um, and I think there's a little bit of, um, like you, you know, my local council put out tweets from time to time that I find vaguely interesting. 149 followers, and that's been sort of hovering around that mark now for for weeks, for weeks now. So there's like, I think there's like a few of you guys that um, that sort of follow me, but I don't post on Twitter. I have no interest in posting on Twitter. Occasionally, like the videos will auto post. And um, uh, but if if people want to find out something about it, they'll just find out where you are. You know, they'll if if people really wanted to, to to communicate with me, you know, like Mastodon's where it is, and maybe I should be perhaps promoting and even trying to to get people to get onto these open source federated platforms. Um, and and uh, you know, you might not necessarily get larger creators doing that because there is too much of a cost to their fame. But as someone who is a very small player in the overall grand scheme of things. Um, I think it's it's I you know it would cost me less now don't get me wrong it does cost me whenever I I, I you know, shy away from these things but uh, in all honesty I don't think I'd be losing much if I got rid of Twitter but I really did want to run it past you guys because you were the the guys that actually initially asked me to to reopen Twitter so uh, and and predominantly I I use Twitter as a as a way to DM friends, really, is is it's an alternative. It's a more casual form of email because I'm not really on Discord much these days. I, I'm, I'm not actually a big fan of the the layout of Discord. I know that there are also some uh, privacy concerns with Discord, but uh, with Discord, um, I don't like the idea that it's very closed in. It's very exclusive. Exclusive isn't really part, and that's one of the reasons why, of course, if you go back to my video about why I closed down the Riot Room and the Discord Room, is because it's. I don't want to generate fan club culture and I don't want to generate exclusive culture and closed in culture and, and I feel that chat rooms do that kind of thing where it's like you're talking amongst yourselves the rest of the world are just sort of out there and uh, not even knowing about you and I don't kind of like that with, with Mastodon and, and stuff like that uh, it's you're having public conversations people passing by just chime in and it's great I love that so and that's sort of the, the place I, I, I want to be with and like I say there are more of you like four, four, uh, 949 people that's a significant number on a small platform like uh, Mastodon like on Linux Rocks and you're supporting uh, non-dependence uh, always <laughs> non-dependence if only there was a better word for it yeah if you're supporting independent platforms and you're supporting a break away from silos and that's really it like I'm not trying to make any other grander political statement that you know smash the machine or anything like that I'm sh there are other videos where maybe I'll talk about my political views but they're not important they really aren't um, but when it comes to the engineering side of things when it comes to the structural uh, logistical side of things uh, having uh, individual companies just take control over all of these aspects of our lives and of course Google being maybe one of the scarier ones of this because you know we all funnel our knowledge through the Google search engine Google could spread a lie like anything and who knows if they have they can completely craft humanity's view of the world through their search engine through YouTube and I suppose Facebook can do similar things and of course there are all kinds of accusations leveled against Facebook for their various biases um, and I have no idea, I, you know, it's, it, Facebook isn't something I care about, so I don't have any idea about whether or not these grievances are legitimate. I assume some might be and some might not be. And there might be some people that are claiming that Facebook might be censoring them when really, in fact, they're just sort of trying to get a bit more airtime or they're trying to play a victim card or something like that. And you never know. You never know. 
you never know for sure because Facebook is such a, so opaque, as is Google, as is YouTube. And they're even opaque from the companies that even now operate them because of self-learning algorithms. And it's just like this idea of solving problems with technology, with more technology. The more technology we have, the more there is to understand, and we're well past the point of understanding all of the technology that we even run. Yeah, so it sounds like we're building ourselves a nice little dystopia. But, um, like I say, there is a resistance to this, and there's a resistance to it on a structural, logistical, practical level. And I think maybe it's time I support this. Um, I've never felt like I've lost out with Facebook, because once I cut them loose, the only people I kept in touch with were people that I had genuine connections with. Um, with Twitter, I would probably just sort of private it because I'd need some kind of foot in the door into the wider social media space. But in reality, um, it, it, it wouldn't be a you know a public um, a public utility. And I'm just interested if you guys, well, if you guys would miss me on Twitter or, or anything like that. I think a lot of you guys that might follow me on Twitter might be on Linux Rocks as well. I mean, they've got some good apps for the Android. I'm sure there's something decent for the iPhone. I think their web client on the on the mobile is quite good, but. Um, but the thing is, with Facebook, I didn't look back when I got rid of it. The thing is with Google and YouTube, and I'm counting Google and YouTube, but really the same thing, is that they do offer a type of value that Facebook don't. Facebook, their business model is advertising and holding your friends hostage. That's basically it. The reason why people join Facebook is because there are other people on Facebook. And... I think that, that that's not necessarily, you know, the. I don't think they've got as much power as they think they do in this regard. And I think they're selling a degree of convenience for it all. And I think they're selling a degree of, like, they're capitalizing on this feeling of missing out. They're capitalizing on this emotional insecurity that everyone sort of has. And I'm not, I don't want to play that game. And I think that there is a degree with, with Twitter there. And um, so, yeah. And but the thing is with Google, I think that the thing is with with YouTube in particular is, is that they do offer this value. Like there are very few other places on the internet where you can just up. I don't think there's anywhere else on the internet. Maybe like Daily Motion or something like that, where you can upload countless amounts of content for free, no questions asked. You can even make money off of it. And that's the thing with YouTube as well is that you know that I suppose there are three things about YouTube that give it the edge that it has. The, the unlimited uploads that you just don't even have to think about it, that they've made video as common as the written word, which is actually quite fantastic if you think about it. Uh, it's also that they pay their creators. There is a cash incentive here. And even though that YouTube offer, uh, runs at a substantial loss, they still pay their creators. That's something worth worth bearing in mind. And the third, which is unarguably an incredibly, you know, one of the most important ones, I would say, is the discoverability. More people watch my videos on YouTube than any other platform and by a heck of a large margin. So, um, and I think that, you know, we, I think a lot of you guys have actually um, talked about Peertube to me as well, which is like a federated version of, um, of, of, you know, basically trying to make YouTube but the federated distributed version of it. And I have started uploading my videos to Peertube. So I will put a link to that down in the description below. You can actually follow, follow my Peertube account from your Mastodon instance. So I'm going to be doing a separate video on Peertube, talking about my experiences with it, which have pretty much all been positive, really. And I would especially like to thank curator at mastodon.art curator at mastodon.art who was the person that sort of uh, helped me set up the account and helped me get going there and it's, if you're on mastodon definitely an account worth following curator at mastodon.art um, fantastic account retoots 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 reposts a lot of um, a lot of community artwork which is absolutely fantastic it's kind of got me back into art in a, in a way um, and just seeing you know because art is is to me like it's, it's you know an exposure of the soul and, uh, and I think that that's really kind of poetic in a cer certain way to see all these independent artists just making their way in the world. So, um, so I'll be doing a video on Peertube, but yeah, videos are going up on Peertube now. Um, th thanks to those of you that have strong-armed me into eventually doing it. But unfortunately with Peertube, you know, like, they do have to beat the hurdle of, of discoverability and availability and i think maybe monetization might be able to come in time but that's you know probably a significantly longer way off at the moment but you know freedom isn't free and it's not easy and it's not comfortable and anyone who's opened up a history book can attest to that um but yeah like i say separate video on that so i think uh that's about it from from me today but thank you very much uh for for, for listening through this uh through this little ramble um 
If you ever want to know where I am at with social media and you can follow all the kind of stuff that I do, my Neo Cities page is the best place to check, but all the relevant links I'll put, make sure they're in the description down below. But with my Neo Cities page, not only do I put links to all my social media, but I put links to RSS feeds right next to them. I think RSS, that is the medium that we need to claim back. I, I mean, you know, I know a lot of you guys say that RSS never went away. Same for me, I've got my RSS reader. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's incredibly worthwhile. It's how I get a lot of my news because it's reliable, it's chronological, it's open source, it's distributed, and it works it works a treat. And I, you know, I don't know why we don't use, um, well, I, don't, I don't know why everyone else doesn't use it. Maybe it's just a little bit too much work or maybe, well, actually, I think, I think when it comes to just about any service, there's a reason why companies like Twitter, companies like Facebook, companies like Google spend billions upon billions on marketing. Now, I think that does make more of a difference than we'd like to believe. All of us in the software world, you know, a lot of us, we're just really pragmatically minded. We're minded like engineers. And the thing is, and, and, and as someone who knows a lot of engineers, I'm not an engineer myself, but I know a lot of engineers, the, you, you know, they're too smart for their own good, if you know what I mean. As if, if, as if there was a thing as being too smart. But it's like, uh, a lot of people I know who are like engineers or engineer minded sort of assume that everyone has this um, enthusiasm to understand a concept that isn't the norm. And I don't think that's the case. I think a lot of people just eat up what's shoveled in front of them. And, um, and there's a problem. And maybe it's a problem we can solve as a collective effort. Who knows? And um, I'm sorry if that sounded a bit elitist, but there you go. Uh, anyway, thanks very much for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. This has actually been a longer video than I thought it would be, but um, but I really just wanted to to just ask you questions on, on Twitter, really, more over anything else. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.